Hey everybody, welcome back to Reach Our Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, and in this week's video, we are going to do a deep dive into the motley mutation. Motley is a classic mutation in a lot of different species, but what we call motley in reticulated pythons is actually completely different than anything else. The pattern looks similar to the motleys in say a corn snake or a boa constrictor, but in corn snakes, motley is a recessive mutation. In boa constrictors, it's allelic with their hypomelanistic mutation. But in reticulated pythons, motley takes the form of an incomplete dominant mutation. That means if I breed this motley to any other reticulated pythons, I automatically get half motleys in the clutch. If I bred two motleys together, I would get the rare and beautiful super motley. You know, now that I think about it, the motley mutation is probably like a heavier pattern influence version of something like a black pastel ball python. And we can get into why in just a minute here. So the motley mutation on its own is kind of a, a pattern reduction mutation. It cleans up the patterns of reticulated pythons and takes on a ton of different looks. Some of the key influences that you'll see across motleys is a heavier head stripe down the center. Ooh, now that I'm looking at her, look at these cute little white checker marks on her chin. You're so cute. This girl's name is Bullseye because of the reference to the type of pattern that it takes on with her being a dwarf motley. She's got some of that nice dorsal stripe going on, or at least trying to go on from her Kalatoa and Jampea influences, but it takes on the, the form of spots inside of a circular pattern down the body of this snake. Some motleys can be completely clean striped. Some of them still have a little bit of side pattern as in those rosettes and flames, but much more typically, what you see is an erasing of the side pattern down the motley. And many of them are quite a bit darker. You can see how dark gray and silvery this girl is, even extending down onto her belly. You see that dark pigmentation that takes over the belly, which is normally like a very light gray or white. Look at those rainbows. Now, because the motley mutation actually smooths a lot of that pattern out, it reveals some of the really beautiful traits that reticulated pythons have on their own, such as that gorgeous iridescence as they move through ultraviolet lighting. So Motley is somewhat subtle in what it does to the pattern. It, it definitely cleans it up a lot and, and has some decent influence. You can tell them from a mile away, but it's not the overpowering kind of mutation that everything you make in Motley looks like a Motley. In fact, it plays so strangely into other pattern mutations that it oftentimes has completely unexpected or atypical results. When bred together, the super motley is actually like a more extreme version of the motley itself. So you're thinking it's gonna reduce pattern. The super motley actually completely wipes the pattern out, leaving behind like a chrome, charcoal, gray, patternless animal. It's actually pretty spectacular. Very similarly to a black pastel ball python, there is one caveat that comes along with the super motley mutation. You can sometimes get a, a deformation of the skull, a bridge across the eyes with the super motley. Typically not anywhere near as extreme as what they call like the duck build super cinnamon or super black pastel ball pythons, but it definitely impacts the scale count and can sometimes pinch the bridge of the nose a little bit closer together. There's a lot of you know reputation for super motleys like not making it to adulthood or not being able to breed or having neurological issues and things like that. None of that actually seems to be true. They actually seem to be a, a pretty healthy animal and the, the bridging is fairly minor uh, to the point where it's probably just cosmetic, but that's something that I definitely wanted to mention to those of you who might be interested in pursuing a super motley project. The history of the motley mutation is actually 
really interesting. See, the thing is, out in the wild, you're gonna have hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of reticulated pythons across their range. And because of their beautiful skins and the demand in the skin industry, reticulated pythons are the number one most highly traded wildlife species that there is today. So that's actually really terrible for reticulated pythons, but the byproduct of that skin trade, you have professional people looking at thousands of reticulated pythons every day. And when they see something different, they say, now this one looks really different. I bet you somebody in the pet trade would be interested in this. Those mutations typically, or at least sometimes, get saved and brought into the hobby. Not so with the Motley. In fact, the very first Motleys appeared in the collection of Bob Clark completely randomly. They were albinos. They were from within the albino project. So the original mutation, turning that genetic switch off that cre creates all that correct pattern actually happens completely spontaneously within a captive bred collection. And that's not the only time or place it's happened either. We actually had a motley spontaneously hatch uh, within a breeding project with my buddy Don Munson. Came out of an orange ghost stripe project and in a superdorf one that we tracked the bloodline all the way back. No history of motley in that project whatsoever. And it's also happened in pure Philippine localities in the wild, which they nicknamed a tribal. So those tribals were actually the motley mutation within a pure locality animal. And those have made their way into the pet trade today as well. There was another mutation as well uh, that I believe was named the black lace that turned out to be a motley on top of it. It also popped up with some Indonesian keepers. I believe it was wild collected and proved out to be another line of motley as well. If you guys know what that one was called, go ahead and comment below. I don't know guys, it's like rain and motleys. It's cool to have many different bloodlines available of that motley mutation. As far as motley combos, combining that mutation with other mutations goes, you have tremendous, almost unlimited potential, especially in the heterozygous motley form or homozygous super motley form because they're so wildly different from one another and they play so weirdly into other mutations. So clearly you can take this pattern mutation and run it into a number of different color mutations such as albino, uh, orange ghost stripe is affected by it, sunfires, platinums, phantoms, all interact a little bit differently with the motley, especially in genetic mutations that are known for slightly tweaking the pattern as well. Like for example, with the orange ghost stripe, which stripes it out, the motley separates pattern from the top to the sides tremendously. With sunfires that kind of clean and embolden the look, that pattern reduction plays very well into the motley. Phantom motleys, if you ever looked at a phantom, it actually kind of reduces and tweaks the pattern in different ways. So motley phantoms take on an entirely new look of their own. However, things really start getting interesting when you begin putting motley into other pattern mutations. Typically, pattern and pattern mutations don't really go too well together. They're competing for the same space, and the visual result is less than originally desired by the breeder. Now, I remember the first motley pattern combo was with a tiger. And the tiger mutation is also a pattern mutation. And so no one knew what it would quite look like. A lot of people predicted it, that it would be ugly. The first man to produce those snakes was Jason Reed. And when he hatched the original Motley Tigers, he humorously nicknamed them the ugly snake because of all the haters who said it wouldn't look good. But at least in this guy's humble opinion, Motley Tigers are one of the coolest if not the absolute coolest two pattern mutation that I can possibly think of. If you can think of a better one, let me know. And you can't make a video about Motley's without noting probably one of the weirdest genetic combos in the reticulated python world, which is the Motley golden child. So you have two different non-allelic genes that both affect the pigmentation and pattern of the snake, reducing pattern and darkening the animal. The visual crossover 
between what high patterned golden childs and low patterned motleys look like is almost identical, even though they're happening in two different completely separate areas within the snake's genome. And when combined, the patternless brown golden child to the typically silver charcoaly motley, you get an almost solid black snake. It's like a deep chocolate coffee brown with an intensely patterned head stamp, we would call it, where that center stripe branches out, almost taking on the form of an aberrant Maltese cross. Very gangsta. Now, a number of different breeders have worked with that motley mutation and brought it into all kinds of different combos. Now, if we're talking specifically about dwarf and super dwarf motleys, my favorite combos are going to be the anery combos. That's another color mutation that plays so well with the dark black, charcoal gray silvers of the motley, both motley and super motley. It just has an intensity to it that is hard to resist. The motley also lightens and brightens some of the dorsal pattern and the head color to a near lilac tone that is incredible. So Annery Motley Tigers are amazing. A lot of the Super Motley stuff we've made have like a faded paint job that are, are really killer. And to double down on that Motley Golden Child melanistic effect, the Annery mutation actually removes all of the red pigment, shifting the color tone from the animal from like a coffee brown to a midnight black coloration. Interestingly, when you get that rainbow iridescence, the darker the snake, the easier it is to see. So Motley Golden Childs are known for it. You get all of the different colors from red all the way down to purple across the spectrum. But with anneries, not only does it reduce the red on the snake, it reduces the red reflection so that they reflect primarily greens and blues for a really wild effect. So because of the subtle nature of the shift that the Motley does, if you're a fan of clean patterns and bold contrast, you may wanna take a look at getting some Motley stuff in your own collection because they are just way too fun to play with from a selective breeding standpoint. I hope you guys enjoyed this video proudly brought to you by Ship Your Reptiles. We'll catch you next time.